God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, the indwelling of the Trinity with a meaning and the purpose Wherewith the positional sanctification being done by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ could get the root cause or the way path to be cleared. In this positional sanctification, our Lord, our Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will really make a path. And as we being strengthened in the Spirit by the indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we are putting upon for the second realm, which is an experiential sanctification. In this realm of experiential sanctification, it is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has to dwell in our hearts, being rooted and grounded in love, to understand the length, the breadth, the height, and the depth, which includes the reality of this unique spiritual life to be executed. And furthermore, we have the indwelling of the third person as well, who is none other but Lord God, the Father, and that will be an ultimate sanctification. Therefore, never before the church age and never afterwards does God indwell every believer's body at the moment of salvation it is Lord God the Father Lord God the Son and Lord God the Holy Spirit take up residence in the body of the church age believer God's indwelling continues uninterrupted throughout the believer's life and scripture documents this unprecedented indwelling indwelling of Lord God the Father in John 14 23 Ephesians 4 6 and 2nd John 9 indwelling of Lord God the Son John 14 20 17 22 to 23 17 20 26, Romans 8.10, 2 Corinthians 13.5, Galatians 2.20, Colossians 1.27, and 1 John 2.23-24. The indwelling of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, Romans 8.11, 1 Corinthians 3.16, 619 through 20, 2 Corinthians 616. Because of the immanence and transcendence, how can God indwell a believer's body? That will be the question. But God is only present which involves his immanence and transcendence. His immanence means his entire essence is always present everywhere so that the whole God is in every place. Transcendence means he is independent of the created universe so that no particular place exclusively contains him. Immanence and tran transcendence exist in balance so that the whole earth is full of glory. He is holy in every point in the universe while at the same time he is the holy and lofty and exalted, infinitely beyond the universe. If God is everywhere, what is the meaning of his special indwelling of the church as believer's body might be the question. The combination of immanence and transcendence means that God is free to be local, to have a presence at the, pro at the particular location. And since he is not restricted to time and space, he can decide how he wants to dwell in these temporal and physical dimensions. He does not always have to be present in the same sense. When he dwells within creation, Therefore, he dwells by his own choice and in a manner of his own choosing. His sovereign decision is this matter. In this matter is a striking expression of his love and his eternal purpose. The indwelling of the church age, believer's body, is God's local presence in a more intimate relationship with the believer than has ever existed prior to this dispensation. God's personal indwelling presence within the Christian's body is an astounding fact and the basis for blessings beyond imagination. Dear brethren, we have to know what is the reason for indwelling of Lord God the Father, the indwelling of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and indwelling of Lord God the Holy Spirit. But in simple truth, indwelling of Lord God the Father, it could be each member of the Trinity has a purpose for residing in the believer's body. Indwelling of Lord God the Father is related to the glorification of his protocol plan, Ephesians 1 through 6 and 12. The Father is the author of our portfolio of invisible assets. He is the grantor of our escrow blessings for time and for eternity. He is the mastermind of the protocol plan for the church age. He is the designer of the divine dinosphere, the invisible sphere of power in which the protocol plan is executed. The Father is not the revealed member of the Trinity. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is. The Father is not the divine agent in the believer's life, execution of the Christian way of life, but Lord God the Holy Spirit is. Because Lord God the Father is revealed indirectly through Christ by the power of the Spirit, little appears in scripture concerning his personal indwelling. The Bible presents only the asserting fact, or arresting fact that he does indeed indwell every church as believer, his indwelling guarantees his personal ministry to every believer. Therefore, dear brethren, we need to know the 
related to the glorification of the protocol plan of God, what we are studying and going through under the polity of privileges of this unique spiritual life is the only root cause why Lord God the Father indwells each and every believer. And Lord God the Son executes in the, exec in the experiential sanctification so that they could be stabilized. And positional sanctification as we go, it requires Lord God the Holy Spirit ministerial work that has been done. And furthermore, as long as we fail, we are not stabilized in the strength of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Therefore, what we need to do. We need to be in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit by not grieving, nor squelching, nor lying to the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Therefore, what we need to do, we need to get back to rebound by the using of the privacy of our priesthood. And as long as we wait along, not to get back, you are just retarding. You are putting the reverse gear. You are into reversionism. And therefore, as you don't grow up, you do not understand the power of experiential sanctification which has been given for us to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And this experiential sanctification wherewith you and I have been called is of a very great importance. Importance. This experiential sanctification so that Christ could indwell in our hearts, Ephesians 3, 16 through 21, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God, Ephesians 3, 8 and 9, and 3, 21, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly about that we can ask or think or even could imagine or request, our Lord says, through the church you need to go and give the glory to Jehovah. And that's the point of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ indwelling in us. And that is the maximum glorification as we have read in the indwelling of the Father, the purpose to fulfill this protocol plan of God, the unique spiritual life. Dear brethren, it is of a very most important that as we go through, as we walk through, as we learn through, the process of this Church Age Believers program. Never before in the history, never afterwards, that the Church Age rapture will happen, that Lord God the Trinity will indwell in us. It is our time, it is our privilege, it is our responsibility. And we cannot stay and say we will do this and we will do that. No. It is purely by the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that we are here to do His work, to His, to His care, to do His ministry. And we cannot think any other things apart from this. Dear brethren, think over these issues, which is so much essential for us. Without this, it is highly impossible to understand why are you alive on this earth. Some morons want to debate and tell it is no, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We, we, we allow only the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Some theology and some scholars want to say, never they know the ministry of the indwelling of Lord God the Father and Lord God the Son. And they don't want to say, as long as they're in blinded, as far as they can think, they are thinkable, according to their thinking, they're going to preach in the pulpits. Formulating life concise to that viewpoint. But our Lord has not called for that, dear brethren. We have a greater purpose. We have a greater ministry. We have a greater work. And that work, that purpose, that ministry will take time. And we need to understand the real meaning and the definition. Why has such our Lord really kept us alive even after salvation? Why has our Lord been indwelling in us in the Trinity form? Why has our Lord given for us to follow the will of Lord God the Father, not to do the will of our own? Why Apostle Paul is praying in Colossians 4? to the reality, for my deliverance you pray, so that I should preach the mystery doctrine of the church age. Really, dear brethren, as long as we fail to understand the simple truths, so long you will be a burden to the congregation, simply feeding upon, squeezing upon their blood. And if you really don't have the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, then take it granted, never you will come to read these things. Never. That's why our Lord said in John chapter 3, verses 16 through 20, the discourse of a great one. The people of darkness, they never failed. They failed to come to look upon the truth of light. The one who loves the truth will love to come to light. But since they love the evil works, they don't want to come to know the truth. And that is what it is happening today in our churches. The pastors don't know the reality of the importance of Bible doctrine. The pastors do not know what is the mystery doctrine. The pastors do not understand the indwelling of the Trinity. And they call themselves as pastors. And if they ask more, they say we are evangelists. Even the evangelism true one is not being found in their minds. They want to speak that is which is false. Dear brethren, think of these issues. Because time is too short. Every day is gone, it is gone. You will not get back this day again. People will be happy to remind and to tell, today is this anniversary, today is this day, tomorrow is that day, tomorrow is our independence, or today is this, today is that. But they don't want to know the real deliverance in Christ. 
If it is not today to learn the truth, tomorrow it can't. You may pass by the years on this earth. You may look upon the things pertaining to your charity. But never I will come back to look upon doctrine. Therefore, dear brethren, think over these issues. Because every believer has the equal privilege and equal opportunity. Every believer has been given the same work to do. With the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit provided there in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And we cannot waste our time to tell X, Y, Z reasons at the judgment seat of Christ and think that what we are doing is right. Think in the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the mind of Christ. In the experiential sanctification, be stabilized in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Lord God, the Son who indwells in you and execute under special trials as well, you don't fail. And in the ultimate sanctification, Lord God, the Father will take care of you. Positional sanctification, Lord God, the Holy Spirit has put an establishment. Experiential sanctification to begin or to go through that, it is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That is what you have to learn the mind. And from experiential sanctification, further when you are about to die, you have to look upon the ultimate sanctification for Christ. That is Lord God the Father. You have to put the foundation because now you know Lord God the Father through doctrine. What is his essence? What is his character? What is his development? And we fail to understand the simple truths. And we think this is great, this is true, and this is XYZ. When they gibberishly jump around, dance around, and speak along in tongues. It's of a very great pain to understand these things for you all. But it is of a very great pain for us to grieve and tell again and again because the mystery doctrine of the church age is being buried in our pulpits. It's not just decayed, but buried. As long as we come to open this truth, we are not able to understand the true purpose in Christ. In God's grace, this is the ninth month, we are successfully continuing the word of the Lord. And we need to know how much grace our Lord has bestowed upon us each and every day. Each and every day, as we grow up, do you not think that the nature itself teaches to you, you grow old and strong? And so many days of lessons, what we have learned, have we grown up to the reality of the word that you need to understand. Tomorrow we start off with the 10th month, the first day of the week. As Lord God Almighty leads us, we shall go through that. So which way, dear brother, you want to go, you decide. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow with our headboard and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that you will live upon Christ. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple. Believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer the great matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. You shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher the great matter is to carry Sotom Lagan, herald the word in season and out of season. Because of the dharma from my witnesses wherewith you have been called. The dharma from my witnesses, number one, indwelling trinity followed by the Bible in our hands. And number two, the dharma from my witnesses is none other but dear brethren our hearers if there are no hearers do not worry besides nature the entire angelic host will be our witnesses but what is our work our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord and Lord knows to whom this information has to be given Lord graciously preserves it and gives to them our work is to deliver 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 faithfully not fearing men as Lord gives command in Jeremiah 47 when the Lord has given charge to the weapon do you think it's going to keep quiet no, it is going to accomplish for the charge wherewith Lord has given to it. So are we in Christ as being bona fide gifted pastor teachers. We shall continue tomorrow. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, lend us on these things and make it a source of blessing and talent, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. We thank thee for thy grace and we look upon for thy grace more for thy glory, not to be used in vain. In Christ our Lord, our Savior, we pray, Father. Amen.